Ask me have to stand, Mark chapter 16. <coughs> Mark chapter 16. Jordan, you fix your socks. Jordan, did you fix your socks? <laughs> It's good to know when I get old, mismatch my socks, I can say, well, it's a cool thing to do now. Yeah. Mark chapter 16, you got to say amen. amen. You got to say, hold on. <coughs> Verse 15, he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let us pray. Most gracious heavenly Father. Lord God, if we gather here, Lord, tonight, Father, pray as only you can, God, you have your way, Father. Lord, amongst this body, Father, I pray, God, the Lord, any among us, God, Lord, is lost and unknown that you're your son, Father. Pray to be the day you save him, Lord, for that last too late, God. Heavenly Father, you know the hearts, Lord, of every man, one boy, girl, gather here, Father. And I pray, God, that all our hearts desire, Lord, God, be set on you, Father, you alone, Lord. Pray you hide behind your cross on you can, God, Lord, speak with me here, Lord, forget my life, Lord, I love you. And I thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 <clears throat> for a few moments tonight, if you can, talk to you on the thought of, and now what happens? You know, last week, of course, we focused on the resurrection and what all happened and, and focused on the, the empty tomb and the empty grave and, and, and the, I said, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But we got to understand that it don't mean that. It don't end that. Seems like in church we get the birth down, we get the death down, then we get the burial down, we get the resurrection down, and after that we don't get nothing else down. There's more to it, guys, than just that as well. And Jesus here, we're going to find out as he was, after he was resurrected, he got met with his disciples and, and had a little talk with them. But basically, you got to understand that after the resurrection, most of them that was with him didn't believe that he was going to raise up. Most of them didn't believe, because the Bible said most of them went back doing what they were doing before he found them. Matter of fact, you find out that everybody forsook him, everybody turned their backs on him, everybody went their own way. But you got to understand that it don't end there. Here in Mark chapter 16, scripture verse 14, it said, Afterwards, he appeared unto the eleven, <coughs> as they sat at meat, or sat down eating, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him, after he was risen. If you remember, we know all through the scripture that they were witnesses of his resurrection. Matter of fact, we know, we know that he, he told some of the women, they took off, he, Peter and John, of course, they came and saw they wasn't in there, and they went running back telling everybody. And, and matter of fact, we know he spoke to different ones after the resurrection, told them, you know, and they realized who it was after he spoke. And still yet, yeah, there were so many that did not believe. Matter of fact, we know that he ended up showing a step around 500 people, the scripture says, if you add up everybody. It's how many saw that he was alive after his resurrection. And they were to be the witnesses. You've got to understand that Jesus died and conquered death in the grave for the simple fact of, the scripture talks about if a grain of wheat died, it died alone. But if it died alone, it brings forth much. So you got to understand where that much comes in. Jesus died so that all of us could be that grain of corn, so that all of us could be the much, that all of us could do our part. Because you got to understand, Jesus, if you are saved, you are part of his body. If you're part of his body, you're supposed to be doing part of his work. Right. Part of his work was telling everybody, everybody that we can, about the gospel or the good news. So he hung everybody up, had to have a little power with them, a little talk with them, because they had lost sight. They quit at the resurrection. And you must understand that the rest for us ain't been wrote yet. We got to live it out. The story is unfolding now before our very eyes. As a matter of fact, it's about like a storybook. You start off reading. You ever, I hate reading, but if you ever read a book, it seems like always, most time, they start off a little bit slow. And then business will pick up. About halfway through, you're a little bit interested. And then you put the book down. Get striped, get sidetracked. Don't ever pick back up, don't ever finish. How it is? Well, got to understand life is the same way. We get saved, 
We worship the Lord, have a good time coming together, all this good stuff like that. But sometimes in life we get sidetracked. Sometimes in life we get discouraged. Sometimes we get what I call we hit a pothole, hit a speed bump along the way, and it kind of throws us off. And we don't ever go back to our story. We don't ever get back to the big picture of things. And what Jesus is saying is, he said, yeah, he said, I was born of a virgin. He said, yeah, I died on the cross. He said, I lived a sinless life. He said, I overcome death, heaven, grave. He said, but the story don't end there. The story is still being written. You've got to understand that our work for the Lord is still being written. Some of us have work. If we, some of us have got a short story. Right. Right. Some of us are going to have a long one. Some of us think I have one. But Jesus said, look, guys, he got everybody to get a hold up, so they got to talk to you. And the first thing he did was, they was his 11 was with him. And this is the thing. We know where was the 12th one at. There you go. Right. Graveyard dead, wasn't he? Yeah. Took his own life. So he come up to the 11 and talked to them. They was eating. You know, it's always a good time to talk to somebody when they're eating. Because when somebody's eating, they'll agree to anything you say. So he come up to them. And the first thing he did was he chastised them. Got on about their unbelief. And their hardness of heart. Why? Because they believed not. All the, all the witnesses. They didn't believe everything that they had told them. Matter of fact, you know, Jesus told them, said, I got to go away for a little bit, but I'm coming back. And then all of them said, yeah, Lord, yeah, we with you, Lord. And the very second he died, they wasn't with him no more. Right. Was gone. That's why I never understood how come somebody can get saved and never go back to church. Right. How somebody can get saved and never talk about Jesus. How somebody can get saved and act like your world just fell slam apart mm -hmm. when God just took you from the bottom to the top just like that. But the Bible said this. He got on a little bit talking to him. Verse 15, that's what he said. <clears throat> he said unto him, you got a work to do, guys. He said, go into the world. And you must understand, he wasn't just entrusting this word for those 11. When he was talking to there, he was talking to the church in general as well. He's talking to all of us that we got a work to do. We got to go ye unto all the world. He didn't just say you pick and choose where you want to go. Don't just go what's convenient for you and tell people not just go where your friends are, not just go where you find. He said go unto all the world. And her little woman gave a testimony and said her daughter was hooked on drugs and said that she said she'd go around, she was doing women's coffee. She said, I go and I speak at him. He said, We just have a time. She said, My daughter kept getting messed up, kept getting messed up. So every time the phone rang, said she'd be arrested. This would happen, that would happen. He said, or excuse me, she said, I got to toe up. She said, one night I was in my prayer closet. She said, I was praying. I said, Lord, if you can't deliver my girl off of drugs, I'll never. Never. Speak about you again. She's what business have I got to other people about you when my own life is falling apart and you ain't doing nothing there. And she said, no sooner had I thought that stupid thought and said that, so God said this to me. If you value your daughter's life more than anybody else's, I'm not going to use you anyway. You got to understand it ain't just about who we want to, it's about everybody. The gospel is the good news that's for everybody. And the good news yeah, no. You know what? Bad news travels just like that. Yes. Yeah. Amen. But good news, you know why? Is it? Why the good news don't travel so fast? Why does God not save somebody six months down the road and somebody blind about it? But you let that person get a DUI and so it's all over the internet. Matter of fact, they know about it before you know about it. Because bad news travels fast, guys. No, it travels fast. I'm going to tell you the gospel is good news. It don't travel fast. Yes. It don't travel fast. Matter of fact, we're running out of time. And that's what Jesus was telling him. He said, look, we got to get into all this world. He said, I'm about to leave. He said, no, I'm not leaving. He said, I'm going to come back. He said, this thing's going to wrap up. You got to understand it for the church. This is our time to shine, guys. This should be the church is finest hour right here amongst us. Right now that we're living in the last of the last days. Yeah, I've been saying that, but it still is. Matter of fact, now more than ever, we ought to be about 
I followed me. Can yeah. I get a witness right there? Matter of fact, remember when Jesus was left behind by his mother and father in the temple, the Bible says they went back looking for him after a day's journey and finally found him after three days. They said, Well, where in the world have you been? We were to death. Remember what Jesus said? He said, I must be about my father's business. Even at 12 years old, you got to understand, guys, uh, that God did not save us uh, for us to sit on our blessed assurance and do absolutely nothing. He saved us uh, for us to be about our Father's business. Uh, what is the Father's business? Uh, telling everybody we can about a man named Jesus uh, and what he done for us, he can do the same for them. Uh, that's what we got to do. Uh, we got to hunker down, baby. Uh, grow a backbone uh, and start telling people that Jesus is coming soon uh, and ask people, are they ready? Are they ready? I want them to look around. Everybody say they're ready, but I want to tell you, everybody ain't ready. So Jesus told them, said, man, I don't understand, boys. He said, look, I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So the Bible says, tell them I'm back. He that believes and is baptized. He didn't say he was baptized. He that believes because it takes faith before it takes baptism. You have to believe. Yeah. Believe. You have to believe. And the way a man or woman believes in Jesus is different to believe in a lot of things because when you believe in Jesus, you believe everything he says about you and and everything he says about himself, and when you really truly believe, you got to understand Jesus comes lives inside of us. Right. We are his vessel. Right? Are we supposed to be his vessel? Yeah. He comes lives inside of us, takes over, and all baptism is is just an outward sign to everybody else that I ain't ashamed of what he done for me. Right. All baptism really is, is that's why they're saying everybody else, gee, I'm not who I was, and we know we, we put so much emphasis on baptism, which I do believe. And I'll stand on that to the end. If a man or woman is saved, they should be baptized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because we know Jesus was baptized out in the Jordan. Did yeah. he need to be? No, but he done it as an example. Uh, That's right, and we were to be examples of others as well. If we were changed, to be baptized as well. He told them this. He said, they believe and baptize, they're saved. If they don't, they're damned, which means curse for everlasting. Listen to what he said, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And when we see these signs here, write them down and then check off every one going on in your life. The stage. I will tell you, I looked at my little list and it didn't look real good. Mm -hmm. The Bible said this, in my name I'll cast out devils. He said in my name they're going to speak with new tongues. In my name they're going to take up serpents. In my name if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. My name is shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Dare I ask you, when's the first time you cast out a devil? When's the last time you cast out a devil? Right. That's kind of a hard list, guys. But the Bible said, if you believe, these things will follow you. And I've had somebody tell me before, preach to before, and all that. That's just talking about the disciples. No, it ain't. We all are his disciples. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We all are his disciples. All that stuff will be following us everywhere we go. Matter of fact, say what you want to, we all have fought yeah. some devils at one time or another. get with yeah. We all have fought devils from time to time. Matter of fact, if there's something in your life you struggle with, that's the devil we fight. We all have fought the devil at some time or another. Yes. But the Bible talks about casting them out. And that's something, of course, that makes the church uncomfortable. Start talking about casting out devils, all that good stuff like that. People get nervous and everything like that. Start bringing it up. But Jesus said, here, look. He said, Joey, these signs ought to be following you in my name. Right. See, that's the key to everything, guys. Yeah. His name is what gets all this stuff done. Right. His name. It ain't in our name. That's not any of your name, church's name, ain't in preaching. It ain't in nobody. It's in the name Jesus is where this takes place. You got to say there is still power, wonder working power in the name of Jesus. That's why I want to tell you, we miss you that name. We overlook that name, but I'm going to tell you, it always has, it always will be power in the name Jesus. Matter of fact, we know the Bible says at the name Jesus, everybody's going to bow, everybody's going to confess at the name Jesus. It's the only name given by which we must 
be saved at the name Jesus. I want to tell you all hell trembles, all hell gets torn up, all hell gets choked up. They have power in the master's name Jesus. Power like no power you've ever tapped into that you've ever seen. There is something to be said about speaking that precious holy name Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there is something, my brothers and sisters, about that precious name, Jesus. It's in his name. In the name Jesus, you can do these things. In the name Jesus, you can lay hands on a sick and recover. In the name Jesus, you can lay hands on somebody that's laid up with the devil and command them to flee. In the name Jesus, you can take up a serpent and not get hurt if it you. In the name Jesus, it's where all this stuff takes place. And in the name Jesus, and Jesus alone. Matter of fact, remember the seven sons of Stephen? The Bible said they come upon some demon possessed. They went up and said, By the Jesus that Paul preaches, we rebuke you, we tell you to flee, and they bust out laughing at them. Because well, here's the next thing, guys. To use the name Jesus, you got to know the man Jesus. That's right. right. <clears throat> because if you don't know, it won't work. And just like them old boys, when they done that, the demons back and started laughing. And they said, Paul, we know. And Jesus, we know. But who in the world are you? And the scripture said this. He said, not only will these things follow. <coughs> he said, these will be the signs. He said, cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink in any deadly thing. Lay hands on the sick and they recover. Verse 19, after this, the Lord has spoken unto them. He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Yes. After he had equipped his people, he left. God to understand that when God saves a man or woman, he equips us by placing the Holy Ghost, yes. or what I call my heavenly compass, on the inside. Uh -huh. And what a compass does, if you ever looked, anybody ever looked at a compass before, it's got four directions on it. North, east, south, and west. And the way growing up in school that I memorized the location where it went was this little simple thing. Never eat sour watermelon. <laughs> North, east, south, and west. Now memorize all that. And as long as you got a compass, you won't never get lost. Right. As long as you got the compass on the inside, you ain't never going to get lost. That's why you ain't never going to get lost. And what the Holy Ghost or your heavenly compass does, the heavenly compass leads you. That, that, that's why I never believe it. When somebody gets born again, when somebody gets saved, the church is to nurture them, the church is to encourage them. But I want to tell you something. It's the Lord that brings conviction to them. Uh -huh. It's the Lord that's going to lead them. It's the Lord that's going to guide them. It's the Lord that's going to point them in the right direction. Uh -huh. I told you before, I tell you again, something God convicts me of, ain't going to convict nobody else in here of. Right. But the Bible said this, let every man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. There's some stuff you ain't going to find in the book. Amen. I'm going to tell you, God will convict every man and woman of what he needs to. But matter of fact, I told y'all, God convicted me of what's right. Yeah. And do the calls rain and say you what's right on every Monday night? And do what? And say he's got a load of rock up. Yeah. yeah. Johnson, Going around, do you smell what rain is good? No man is not wrong with it, guys. It's what a man or woman is convicted of. Right. If there is no conviction, and you must understand, you cannot push your convictions on other people. Right. That's right. The Holy Ghost will lead you. The Holy Ghost will guide you. The Holy Ghost will direct your steps and your paths. That's what he's good at doing. Bible said this, after Jesus got done speaking with him, he left. Because he left behind what we need, the comforter, right. me and the Holy Ghost, right. and his precious word. Right. Shared the story before. 
Joe Arthur said when they were little, said he'd go stay with grandma and she didn't have no heat. He said that she had a fireplace. And he said before we go to bed, said we stand in front of the fireplace and we spin around. And then we take off running to the bed, jump in and pull the covers up over our head. He said we try to do our best to stay warm all night long. He said my grandma had never been to Bible college. She didn't know nothing about philosophy. Didn't know nothing about having deep thoughts. He said this is what she said one night. He said it was real cold on one particular night. So we, me and my brother spent around in front of the fire. So we got we had the bedroom door open. Said we're getting ready to take off. We're going to jump in the bed. This is what she said. He, she said in the middle of the night. She said if you get cold, I put a comforter at the bottom of the bed, and said so that comforter will keep you warm mm -hmm. yes, till the morning comes. Amen. You got to understand that the Holy Ghost. Our comfort is able yes. to keep us yes. until the morning comes. Yes. That's why until the morning comes. So Jesus went away. But you got to understand, he went away, but he didn't go away. Because he went away, but he left a piece of himself behind that dwells inside of every believer. That's why the Bible says we're two or three together. Right. He said, I will be in the midst. How? Because if you get two or three believers together, then you got two or three pieces of Jesus coming together. That's why, yes. matter of fact, the Bible said, we're two touch and agree. We're two touch yes. and agree. He said, I will be in the midst. He said, I got to go away. He went away. The Bible said this. He was received up into heaven. Sat on the right hand of God. He sat down because we know the scripture said it was over with. It was done. His work on earth was finished. And the Bible said, verse 20, they went forth and preached everywhere. And Jesus left behind a word, left behind a curb to him, and they took him up on it, and the Bible said that they went. You got to understand, guys, uh, that that's what we are expected to do. You got to understand, we'll stand before the Lord one day in judgment, uh, and we will give an account of what we have done with his precious word. Uh, we'll give an account of how many we've told about him and how many we ain't told about him. Right. <coughs> how many people, so we think about this, I sit and think, how many people have talked about Jesus this week? Then I think how many people have a not. <coughs> how many people have we not told about Jesus? If that outweighs how many you have told, there's a problem, guys. There's a problem. So I dare say we all probably got some problems. Mm -hmm. so we got to start telling people about Jesus. Yes. He said this. They went forth and they preached everywhere. That means on the street corner. Yes. In the ghettos, yeah. in the lowest of the lowest places they went, that's why right, unto all the world, uh, they went into the guttermost and the uttermost and told everybody about Jesus. I want to tell you, I don't care the sorest, low down person out there deserves yeah. to hear about Jesus. Yeah. That's right, I want to tell you that one out there that's the biggest hell raiser, whole monger, yeah. whatever they are, they deserve to hear about Jesus. Yeah. So because at the end of life journey, I, I can't think of one person I want to go to hell. Uh, I can't either. And I hope pray you can't either. Because as a child of God, you must understand that hell is forever. Right. It's forever. I don't think we can comprehend forever and get forever through our heads. It's forever. And Jesus said he went away and left them there and they went and they preached everywhere, the Bible said. The Lord working with them. See, that's key. Anybody get up and sing? Yeah. Anybody get up and preach? But if the Lord ain't with them when they do, Amen. the Bible said correctly, this up. Tinkling cymbal, sounding brass. If he ain't got love, got to understand. Uh, if he ain't with you when you do something, better thing to do is not do it. That's right. That's why God never been one to sit around. You know, a lot of times church get up, big people get up, sing, big people get up, tell about big people all stuff like it. If God don't brought you to do it, ain't no point getting them doing it. <coughs> Because if he's saying let's go, if he's saying let's sing, if he's saying let's preach, if he's saying let's testify, he's going to get them doing Because right. if he ain't in it, it might sign up a little bit, they don't have the power. That's right. Where the power comes from is when God shows right. up. Where the power yes. comes from is when God moves. Right. Yes. Where the power comes from is yeah. when God breathes. Yeah. Where the power comes from is yes. when God directs. So when the power comes from is when God takes time out and breathes. The power right. comes from him and him alone. Yeah, God can use anybody, but if anybody gets up without God, there ain't nothing going to happen. That's right. So Jesus told him this. He said he went and sat down on the right hand of God. He went off and they went preaching. The Bible said this. The Lord was working with them and confirming the word 
with signs. One verse particularly says this, faith without works, dead. If a man or woman says they're a child of God, there'll be some work going on. Yes. What are we working? What are we working? What are we working? What are we working? When I say working, I'm talking about progressing for the kingdom of God. What are we something going on? Something going on that lifts up heaven, that lifts up the work of God. He didn't say we're busy body. We got enough busy bodies. They look like they're doing a lot, ain't doing nothing. He's talking about work. And we all have work that we all must be about. And the Bible said that all this stuff they did, it was confirmed. In other words, it was acknowledged how by the word. Who is the word? <coughs> so once again, if it's done, it'll be God. If it's things, it'll be God. If it's going to happen, it'll be God yes. and Him alone. Yes. <coughs> you got to understand that through this life, through this world we're living in, we're going to have some that's going to doubt. We're going to have some that's going to scoff at us, they're going to mock us, they're going to laugh at us. Uh -huh. But our story don't stop at the tomb. We've got all got a work to do. We all got to be about our Father's business. Mm -hmm. Let us stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God. <clears throat> What honor and privilege, Lord, is being God to come together, Father, one more time. God, you allow us, Lord, to have in the land of the living, Father. God, just get to study a portion of your word, Father. God, and what it means, Lord. And God, I pray long you can, Lord. You help us, Lord. God, continue, God, to carry the good news, Father. Lord, everywhere we go.